Hello guys, Pastor Preston is my name. I'm so excited to come your way today. You don't force what is not working to work. It will only work if there is adjustment that fits how it works. Okay, so if you, if you went to school, right, um, a lot of time you have a lot of challenges to fix. Okay, so they'll bring you situations that you need to fix. One of the things that you do is you take the data, that means you find what's available, right? And then you use that upon a formula to find what was not available. Now, I take note of that. That means um, if we know the formula and we, if we know what is available, we most likely can find what is not available, right? Or solve the problem. A lot of time, when you see that things are not working, you need to critically sit down to think, okay? what's wrong what's not working right what do we need to adjust if you can sit down to think and agree before a superior or a standard then you most likely will find what you don't have or what you guys lacked right and then if you bring them in you naturally will now begin to work but a lot of time what we try to do is that we try to force it to work and in trying to force it to work we spoil things we do what will not work or what will cause more trouble okay so that's something that you need to know right a lot of time you hear people will say things like right and let's just forge ahead for peace sake let us just put it put aside the issue and forge ahead for peace sake right that will only create temporal peace i promise you that will only create temporal peace the issues will show up again and there will be trouble. So you need to find out what's really wrong. Sometimes, right, what is wrong is the fact that one person is not even patient. Yes, sometimes, okay? Maybe we are not patient. Not number two, sometimes what is wrong is the fact that you need to understand that that thing cannot change in the individual. So can I bear with it or do I just walk away? You need to think that early, right, as against causing problems to happen or causing issues to happen. You must be very careful about that. That's something that you need to know. So there's a story that I, I heard that really pained me and pained me really hard, okay, of a man who had his wife and his children relocated to Canada, right, but he couldn't follow them because he was doing a business here, right? So while he, he was doing a business here, he found a, a young guy who apparently, you know, was on the street and he wanted to help the young guy. So he took the young guy in. While he took the young guy in to help the young guy, he discovered that the guy had some problems, um, some kind of characters, right, that doesn't work right with him. But you see, he says, well, I can't kick him out. I can't push him away, right? Let me just hope that it will change, you know, one day and the rest of them. Now, look at the story. One day, the guy just went into the house. He was sitting outside and then the guy brought a, a pistol from what they used to pound and hit him at the head and killed him. Now, listen to this story and drove his car, right, to sell it. Drove his car to sell it. And while he drove the car to sell it, right, of course, the guy looked at him and said, you cannot be the owner of this car. So he called the police. And when the police came upon investigation and all that, they rushed to the house and saw that he had killed this man, right, for just a car. Someone who just wanted to render help. This really brought me a lot of pain. Now, what would he have done? He would have helped this guy from a distance. He would have helped him from a distance. Another story. Okay, so there's this young girl who was employed to be a maid in the home, right? And then, of course, the madam would give this young girl a pin because she was nice and kind. He would send this young girl to go get money for him with the pin and the rest of them. And one day, the young girl started to think and say, ah, this, you know, my madam is sending me to go get this, so I know the pin already, right? And then she bought rat poison and killed her madam, right? For how much? Just to take a few money from the account, right? To do transport and go back home. Think about that, right? Because you employ people that, right, are not fit, okay? That, that you know, are not compatible with what you are, right? Because you're trying to help, because you're trying to, you know, just do something, maybe that's a cheap label. Be careful the people you are attached to your life. Be careful the people that comes to you. Be careful the choices that you make. There are always consequences for such, right? There are always consequences for such. Be careful. So don't employ what does not fit you or, you know, attach with something that does not fit you and then begin to complain. No, go for what is best fit. The Bible says can two work together except they agree. That's something very strong. So stop trying to force what is not right to be right, right? You either adjust it or you adjust you to fit that 
thing that is not right. Otherwise, it will not work and there will be problem. You see, it will not work. It cannot work until it has become right, right? So when we sit down to look at what the problem is, right, and fix the problem or fix us or, you know, learn to bear with the issue, make up your mind and, okay, I'm just going to bear with this issue and all that. We cannot really make progress and then we'll begin to suffer a lot of stuff. Now, Jesus said something that was profound and I'm going to end with that. He says, he that wants to be the house, let him sit down and count the cost and see if he has all it will take to finish. At least he starts the building and cannot finish and people look at him and then they mock at him, right? So anything you want to go into, any decision you want to make, right? Sit down and think, if you have everything, right, all right, that you will help you finish it or do it right or be safe in it or have peace and progress in it, otherwise you will get on that job and then you will get stuck somehow. You'd have wasted time, wasted resources, and maybe sometimes I'd put your health into jeopardy and all that. So, so you would have jeopardized your health. And on the long run, then you begin to regret or he could even make you become bitter and wicked because you had suffered from what you ought not to suffer. So make sure that you always count the cost. Go for what you have capacity to manage, right? So you don't get to regret, suffer, or have to suffer a lot of damage for a good action that you're trying to take. I hope this message brings you some help, okay? Use that for your good and help someone find it so they can also begin to uh, become really proactive, right, uh, in the decisions that they make. Thank you for listening and God bless you.